guys, Sam LG here with a new video. By this time you guys have already seen my previous video about the Katusha and its important role for Russia in World War II. Now I'm, what I'm going to be talking about is what I mentioned in that video. I'll be talking about basically a blockade that Germans, the German troops had around a particular Russian city. So let's just jump right into it. Again, giving you guys a little background much like in the last video when I mentioned that no history books mentioned the Katusha weapon. Same, same situation here. In all of the history books that I have read from middle school through high school, I have not, and I'm not even mentioning elementary school, but I have never encountered a book that really dove into what Russians had to endure during World War II. And again, I'm not trying to bash on the U.S. I'm not trying to say the, the U.S. didn't do it. They did. They played a really important role in World War II. But I'm talking about the U.S. history books, the textbooks, do not mention, or at least the ones I've read, I'm not sure if other textbooks are different, they don't mention what Russia did during World War II. Now what I mean by this is, for example, the Katyushas and the blockade, but there's plenty of other things too which I'm going to be talking about in this video, the blockade, as well as what it really meant for Russians to surrender. And I'll get, get into that second part later in the video. Right now, let's talk about the blockade. So as you guys know, Hitler ordered his troops to march north through Poland into uh, Russia for the USSR at the time. So what basically happened was, yeah, German troops advanced, they went all the way up, Eventually, they reached what is Leningrad, or uh, modern-day St. Petersburg. Now, before we even talk about the blockade, German troops advanced through neighborhoods and basically small outlying villages around Leni Leningrad, and um, pillaged and stole basically anything they could possibly find. Now, really huge example, and I don't think most of uh, you out there really know this, and I might be getting this wrong as well, because I don't exactly remember which palace, but I think it was the Palace of Ekaterina, which was located just outside Leningrad. I think it was the uh, Summer Palace of Ekaterina. When the German troops reached this palace, they basically went in there, destroyed it, they stole everything they possibly could. One of the major things they stole was an entire room that was made of amber, which is a precious stone. In Russian, it's called the Yantaj. So basically what, what it was, was it was a giant room in a palace and it, um, all the decorations that were in there, and I'm not talking about the walls or anything because I have no idea, but like the doorknobs, the uh, frames for paintings that were there, everything was made out of amber. And what the German troops did was they went in there, they stole that, they shipped it down to Nazi Germany. And as far as we know, the things that were stolen from that room were never recovered, but rather they were just, uh, the room currently is restored to what it was before, not using all those artifacts that were found because nobody has ever actually found them. But anyway, I got off track a little bit. Going back into the blockade, German troops advance, they go through all these neighborhoods, they go through all these palaces, they steal what they can, they make their way out to what is the outer part of the city of Leningrad. Now at this time, uh, you guys might look at things like Wikipedia and stuff, and, and uh, which would say that the Finns were working with the Germans. I have no idea if that's true or not, but what I'm going to be talking about is what I actually know and what I have learned from what my family has told me, as well as um, different things that I have read that for which the answers I do know. So. What happened was, yeah, German troops uh, surrounded the city of Leningrad, and for those of you who don't know, Leningrad on one side is bordered by the sea. So it's basically one portion of the city uh, is on the sea, and y you know, it's it, it's basically a coast city in a way. Now, what hap happened was, yeah, German troops brought, blocked off the land portion of it, so that made it really difficult and eventually impossible for the Russians to in the city to get food, to get communication in or out of the city. So it basically just made it impossible for anything to happen. Now, this blockade lasted 872 days. Think about that for a second. That's over two years of no 
blockade that's been mentioned that I've read that was even near. I mean, most of the blockades have been, as far as I know, a month at the most. But in this case, over two years, almost three years of a blockade. Now, what did this mean for everybody living in the city of Leningrad at the time? What it meant was that they had to ration their food, they had to be very careful about what they did, um, and the most important thing was that everybody had to get up and fight, because if they didn't, Germans would invade the city and overrun it, and Hitler's order was to burn the city, pillage it, basically level the city. Now, in this case here, we're talking about a city that's, I don't even know how many years old, to have this city just turn to rubble is crazy to think about. And yeah, that's what Hitler demanded. Hitler's specific orders were to level the city. How the German troops did this, it wouldn't matter. What Hitler did say was that they didn't want to take anybody prisoner because uh, then they'd run the risk of feeding all those prisoners and you know transportation and whatever it might have been. It just wasn't convenient for the Germans, so the order was to kill everybody there. Now, what did the Russians do? Yeah, they rationed their food. Yeah, they couldn't get communication in or out of the city. So they did a few things. First off, they had to get up and fight. If they didn't, Germans would come in and demolish the whole city. So 872 days all consisted of Germans attacking, Russians attacking back, and so on and so forth. Now. How did the blockade get lifted? How did the people get out? Whatever happened to this city? I'll tell you. So, during the winter, the sea would freeze over. Now what this meant was the ice was so thick that the supplies of food and rations, whatever it might have been that the Russians needed, were transported over this uh, frozen piece of the sea by trucks and whatever it might have been. At the same time, women and children were evacuated from the city in the same fashion at night over the frozen sea, going into, I don't know exactly where they went into, but I know that they were evacuated all the way across the sea. And it was insanely dangerous because for one, when the trucks would pass over it, it would uh, jiggle around the ice and it would cause some of it to crumble. And if people accidentally took a step in the wrong direction, they would fall through and basically instantly freeze and die. So, yeah, it was insanely harsh conditions. I don't think I've ever read about anything similar to this happening anywhere else. So, yeah, women and children were evacuated from the city. It got to the point where people would even eat their pets. I mean, come on. Over two years of being in a blockade, having no food and no anything really to be able to survive. What are you gonna do? Of course, you're gonna do whatever you can to survive. So, in the previous video, I mentioned what was the Katusha. And yes, this, in this particular situation, I don't know if it played a role, I would assume it did. Um, in that it really helped clear the blockade and let the Russians advance forward. I'm not exactly sure what happened. I haven't dove too far into the details of this particular blockade and what happened, what resulted from this. What I do know is that it was an insanely harsh condition and basically people were forced to either stand up and fight or they would die. What else are you gonna do when you're surrounded by Nazi Germans from every other angle? So there you go, that's the 872 day blockade of what is present day St. Petersburg, known as Leningrad. And as soon as I read more and have more information on this, or if you guys ask for more information, I will definitely post more videos. All you gotta do is just drop a comment in the comment section and say, hey, I just really love, love this video and would love more information on it. Please provide it for me and I'd be more than happy to do so. But now, just to get this information out there. Now I'm gonna kind of change gears and talk about another issue which I mentioned er earlier in the video. So what did it really mean for Russians to surrender? Russians have never, that's not a lie, they've surrendered one time. And I'll get into what that was. What I mean by surrender is giving up the keys to the city and saying, we're done, that's it. You guys can do whatever you want. In 
Russia's case, I've read about this, so I know this is true in our, uh, in the textbooks that we studied in either high school or in middle school, I can't remember which one. It mentioned that when Germans invaded Moscow and basically just took the city over, the people of the city gave up the keys to the city and surrendered. That was never the case. Sorry to say. That was never the case. I don't know if that's just false information or what was going on, but the Russians never surrendered the keys to the city of Moscow. What did happen was that as Germans advanced forward, much kind of like the blockade of Leningrad, Germans advanced, they got into the city. Yes, they did get into the city. They demolished a good portion of it. And yes, it was really tough, but the Russians never gave up. In fact, in the winter time, the Russians advanced forward, killing off a bunch of Germans because, as you guys heard in the previous video, the Germans were never prepared for the winter environment of Russia. Same situation with uh, Leningrad. The Russians would advance during the winter because the Germans were never prepared for what was um, going on. They'd never encountered harsh winter conditions like that. So what would happen was that, yes, in the summertime, Germans would advance forward and go through Moscow, whatever it might have been. In the winter, Russians would push back. Again, I don't know if the Katusha played an important role in pushing the German troops back. I'm sure it did. If not, there would be other weapons to help with the situation, I'm sure. But anyway, the Russians never gave up the key to the city. I can't stress that point enough. The Russians never gave up the key to the city. They never gave up the city, uh, key to the city of Leningrad when it was blockaded for almost 300 days. They didn't give up the keys to the city of Moscow. Now, the only time this did happen was way back during Napoleon Bonaparte's reign in France, which was kind of the same situation I'm describing to you now. Yeah, Napoleon Bonaparte went up into Moscow, got the keys to the city. However, a few days later, he returned it and said, you guys can have it, I'm done, this is not for me. Again, because he was not prepared for the winter conditions of Moscow. Think about it, he's coming from Paris, or not Paris, but I'm assuming, well, he's coming from France, which does experience winter, but not the kind of winter that Mo uh, Moscow experiences. So, Napoleon Bonaparte went up there, Russians said, okay, you know what, here's keys to the city, do whatever you want. A few days later, Napoleon Bonaparte returned the keys to the city and just went back down. Now, that's the only time that Russians have ever given up the key to the city, but it was returned a few days later. So this whole idea in this textbook that I read in that the Russians gave up the keys to the city, it was a total nightmare, it was a disaster, it was never the case. Yes, it was a disaster, yes, it was a nightmare. Russians never gave up the keys to any of their cities, except the time Napoleon Bonaparte in invaded and asked for, or I'm sure he didn't ask, but demanded the keys to the city, whatever it might have been. So, that's the situation that happened there. You guys can expect more videos like this. I know, like you guys know, I'm a history buff, so I love this kind of thing. You guys are definitely going to get more of the perspectives from Russia's side than anything else. Again, with this video, I am not even mentioning Hungary or Austria or Italy or France or Germany. Uh, well, yes, Germany, but not the other countries. I'm just trying to give you guys another perspective of what hap really happened during World War II. Yes, the U.S. did come in. Yes, the U.S. did help out. Yes, they were late. Key. They were late, but they did. What, uh, again, just kind of doing a recap here, what people don't know is what happened in Europe, specifically what happened in Russia. Now, yes, there were a ton of casualties all, all throughout this war. In fact, what you guys might not know is that during that almost three-year blockade of Leningrad, a lot of people died. That's the bottom line. Now, yeah, a lot of people died everywhere else, but in the case of Russia, it was either get up and fight and hopefully win or die and not even try. Russia experienced so many casualties, it's just ridiculous. And I can't give you guys specifics because I don't know the specifics. Um, I can do some research and give you guys another video 
outlining all these different things. What I can tell you is that, yeah, Russia did experience a lot of casualties. The, U the U.S. textbooks that we read uh, explains, you know, oh, there were so many casualties, there were so many this, there were so many that. The only casualties that I am familiar with from these textbooks it, are the casualties of the U.S., which has to be because it's a U U.S. Uh, textbook, so yeah, I would kind of expect the U.S.'s perspective on it, but also casualties of all the uh, Jewish citizens that died during this time, and also the Germans, the most common players in World War II. Uh, but what we don't see are the casualties that happened everywhere else, and that's what I'm trying to get, that's the kind of information I'm trying to provide you guys. Again, I'm not providing information for everywhere else. I'm just, uh, at this point, providing information for Russia. I'm not talking about the other countries. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love talking about this stuff. I can talk about it all day. I will let you guys get back to whatever it was you're doing. Have a great day, and I will see you guys next time with a new video. Peace out. Bye.